Singapore in the 21st century is a prosperous, trendy and advanced regional as well as global city-state. The backbone of Singapore's success lies in the hard work, support and commitment of our multiracial community. A community made up of four major ethnic groups, the Chinese, Malays, Indians and Eurasians. Each ethnic group has its own trademark traditions and cultural richness. A conscious effort made to understand and appreciate each other's customs and traditions helps us to build harmony and togetherness in our society. Malay culture in Singapore is a mixture of both ethnic Malay traditions and Islamic religious practices. This unique combination gives the Malay community its own special blend of cultural identity in Singapore. The Malay Muslim community is rich in the sights and sounds of their social customs and traditions. Our understanding of this community begins with an understanding of how their religion, faith and traditions shape their lifestyles and social life. Members of the Malay community share a common Malay culture and belief of Islam. The five pillars of Islam determine the personal conduct and social behaviour of a Malay Muslim. These five pillars are a declaration of faith or shahadat, prayer, fasting, zakat or almsgiving, and pilgrimage. The Muslim faith covers core teachings including those of goodness, kindness, fair treatment of others, filial piety, honesty and respect. Therefore, in addition to the five pillars of Islam, a Muslim grows up learning these important lessons as well as those of courtesy, tolerance, humility, unity, loyalty and responsibility towards others and the nation. Different communities have a different way of living and their own identity. If we are more aware of their cultures, customs and traditions, we can adjust our behaviour, manners and even dressing to show our respect for them. For example, shoes should be removed when entering a Muslim home. This is because any part of the Muslim home may be used for individual or group prayers. Cleanliness is therefore very important in a Muslim's home. In Islam, a Muslim is called to prayer five times a day. These times are at dawn, that is subu or fajr, at midday, zuhur, at approximately 1.15 p.m., late afternoon, asar, at sunset, maghrib, and at night, ishak. Every Friday at midday during Zuhur, male Muslims are required to listen to sermons and perform prayers together at the nearest mosque. When praying, all Muslims place their prayer mats facing the Kaaba, the focal point of faith of every Muslim all over the world. Kaaba is in the holy city of Mecca. Muslims face this direction during prayer. When giving gifts to a Muslim, it is taboo to give liquor or foodstuffs that are not halal. Halal is an Arabic word which means permitted or lawful. Haram means forbidden or unlawful. Animals such as cows, sheep, goats, deer, chicken, ducks and game birds are considered halal if they are slaughtered according to Islamic law. Halal slaughtering includes the following conditions. The person who slaughters the animal must be a Muslim. The animal must be alive at the point of slaughter. The animal should be killed using a very sharp knife. While cutting the throat of the animal, the person must recite a blessing which contains the name of Allah, while at the same time ensuring that two main blood vessels are severed swiftly and completely. The way Malay Muslims shake their hands is called salam. This is followed by a verbal greeting of assalamu alaikum, which means peace be upon you. After the salam, each person brings the hand to touch the left chest where the heart is. Placing the hand over the heart symbolizes the sincerity of the handshake. Very often, both hands are extended and clasped to reinforce the sincerity. Within the Malay community, handshaking between a younger and a respected older person, such as his father, mother or teacher, goes a step further. The younger person offers the salam first by clasping the hand of the elder and then kisses it as a sign of respect. 
Malays also believe that the right hand is better than the left. All good and polite deeds are done using the right hand. The left hand is associated with the act of cleansing. Therefore, it is considered rude to use the left hand to give or receive an item. Before Malay Muslims have their meals, they offer bismillah, a short doa or prayer. Malay Muslims use their right hand to eat their meals. Using their hand to eat shows that they are humble, which is encouraged by Islam and forms part of the Malay culture. Unlike other communities, a Malay Muslim who belches after a meal is not being rude. He is simply giving thanks to God for his good fortune. Within the Malay culture, it is also wise to be aware of the act of pointing. Malays consider it rude to point with the forefinger. The polite way is to make a soft fist with the right hand and use the thumb to point. Traditional Malay dressing is strongly influenced by Islamic teachings on dress code. The emphasis is to dress simply and not to be vain. The traditional Malay costume for women is the baju kurung. This is a loose tunic or baju worn over a long cloth or sarong. During funerals, a white baju is a sign of respect. A Muslim girl may decide to put on a piece of headscarf called the tudong. Some Muslim women may prefer to wear the tudong only at a later age. As for the Malay men, they are encouraged to dress modestly. The traditional outfit for Malay men is the baju melayu. This is a loose shirt worn over a sarong or a pair of trousers. Occasionally, a kain samping is tied around the waist. A traditional headdress, normally made of velvet material, called the songkok, completes the outfit. Islamic festivals are celebrated according to the Islamic or Hijra calendar. Hijra records Prophet Muhammad's migration from Mecca to Medina and forms the basis for the calendar which is based purely on lunar cycles. This makes the Muslim year shorter than the Gregorian year by about 11 days. This is the difference between the Islamic calendar and the Gregorian calendar used by non-Muslims. In certain parts of the Muslim world, a physical sighting of a crescent moon at the given locality determines the beginning and end of important months in Hijra, like the month of Ramadan. Where this sighting is not possible, such as in Singapore, mathematical calculations are used instead. In Singapore, the main festivals are Hari Raya Puasa, Raya Haji, Awal Muharram and Maulud Nabi. The month of Ramadan is one of the holiest months in the Islamic calendar. During this month, all healthy adult Muslims are required to fast. From dawn to sunset, Muslims cannot eat, drink or smoke. They are also to abstain from carnal thoughts and acts and devote themselves to God. During Ramadan, Muslims eat two meals a day, sahur, a meal before dawn to ensure sufficient nourishment for the day, and iftar, the meal after sunset. In addition to the usual five prayer times during this month, Muslims perform one more special prayer called the tarawih, mostly in the mosque in the evening. During Ramadan, Muslims also pay zakat fitra or alms, which is then distributed to the poor and needy. Hari Raya Puasa or Hari Raya Adil Fitri marks the end of Ramadan and celebrates the success of completing a month of fasting. Therefore, non-Muslims should note that Hari Raya Puasa is not the Muslim New Year. During Hari Raya Puasa or Hari Raya Adil Fitri, Malay Muslims begin the day with congregational prayers at the mosques. On this day, Malay Muslims seek forgiveness from relatives and friends for past wrongdoing. It is also a time to renew and reaffirm relationships. Of course, the preparation for Hari Raya begins much earlier with the excitement of shopping for new clothes, decorations for the home and the making of Hari Raya goodies. Dishes like ketupat or rice cooked in a packet of coconut leaves and rendang, a spicy beef dish, are always served at Hari Raya. Malay Muslims celebrate Hari Raya Puasa in a highly colourful and joyful way. 
They love to wear new matching clothes and families enjoy inviting non-Muslims to their homes to share in this happy occasion. Hari Raya Haji, on the other hand, commemorates the sacrifices of Prophet Ibrahim. During this month, Muslims perform the Hajj, which is a pilgrimage to Mecca. This is a journey that Islam requires every healthy Muslim to perform at least once in his lifetime, if he has the means. The most significant event at the Idil Adha, after the congregational prayers, is the sacrifice of the animals such as lambs, called the Qurban. The process of the Qurban unifies all Muslims in an act of sharing and giving, especially to the underprivileged. One third of the meat is given to the individual who supplied the lamb and two-thirds is distributed to the poor and deserving relatives. In Singapore, the slaughtering is done in the mosque. Upon completion of the Hajj, the men earn the title of Haji and the women the title of Haja. Hari Raya Haji or Hari Raya Aidil Adha is marked by congregational prayers at the mosque, after which the day is spent observing the Qurban and visiting relatives. Actually, the Muslim New Year is known as the Awal Muharram. It is marked by the migration of the Prophet Muhammad from Mecca to Medina. The date of the New Year is decided by the Islamic calendar. Another significant festival in the Islamic calendar is the Maulud Nabi. This festival celebrates the birthday of the Prophet Muhammad, the Messenger of God. The day is marked by the commemoration of the life of the Prophet and his contributions to mankind. Besides religious celebrations, the Malays have a rich cultural heritage of music, dance and drama. By spreading more genres of Malay music, the Inang, Zapin, Masri, Joget, uh, not only in the context of uh, the Malays and uh, being uh, multiracial, and I think they, how they can uh, understand and study so-called uh, respect Malay music and how Malay music shares other values from other culture. Whatever I do or we do in our performing arts in reaching out to the community, we have do's and don'ts. So this is what I'm trying to do, you know, blending the, uh, the religious aspect, the cultural aspect, and also to make sure that it's not uh, far away from, you know, what uh, the message is we want to talk about. The work that we do is not just for the Malay people, it's meant for the Singaporean, it's meant for the young people, youth, the old people and all that. Each ethnic community celebrates its own trademark rites of passages. These are important phases of life that each individual passes as he matures and becomes an adult. The main Malay rites covered here are the wedding ceremony, pregnancy and confinement practices, birth and celebration of a newborn, and the final journey in life. Islam encourages a man who can afford to marry to do so and set up a family. The Malay wedding can be divided into three main parts, the betrothal, the akad nikah or solemnization, the bersanding. The betrothal process begins with a representative of the groom meeting the parents of the bride to discuss the marriage proposal. If the proposal is accepted, they will discuss the value of the dowry, the venue and the date of the wedding. This could happen as early as one year before the wedding ceremony. The Akad Nikah or Solemnization Ceremony is usually conducted sometime before the actual wedding reception. The ceremony is held at the bride's home, in the mosque or at the Registry of Muslim Marriages. A verbal and written agreement to marry is made between the groom and the bride's father or guardian. This agreement must be declared in the presence of two witnesses. The Qadi, a religious official from the Registry of Muslim Marriages, presides over this ceremony. The agreement is sealed with a small sum of money called mahar or the maskawin. This gift acknowledges the sanctity of marriage and encourages marriage even among the poor. The Akad Nikah ceremony is a family affair attended by relatives, close friends and guests. The groom sends a hantaran or exchange of gifts to the bride. The gifts are then displayed in the bride's room. The bride's side is also encouraged to do the same in return. 
The bursanding ceremony takes place on the actual wedding day and guests are invited to join in the celebrations in a kanduri. A kanduri is a feast that has been prepared in the Malay tradition of Gotong Royong, where friends and relatives work together to cook the food. Often, kanduris are held at void decks, which have sufficient space to seat the large number of guests. A tambourine or hadra troupe accompanies the groom on his journey to meet his bride. The troupe sings praises to God and good wishes to loud kompang beats. This adds to the excitement and joy of the wedding. A silat performance marks the welcome of the groom. Usually, three silat persons will perform. Following closely is a bunga manga, or palm blossoms procession, which also adds to the colorful occasion. The wedding couple will have their seats on a palamin or raised dais. This signifies their thrones as the wedding couple is treated as king and queen for the day. Relatives are invited to sprinkle flower petals and rice on the couple with wishes for a fruitful marriage. Other characteristic features of a Malay wedding include the berinai or henna application ceremony, whereby the bride's palms and feet are decorated with dye from henna leaves. The tukar pakaian or costume change ceremony, where the bride and groom change outfits for photography sessions and the use of sire leaves to signify purity of the bride. At the end of the wedding feast, guests are given eggs or bunga telur as a sign of a fertile union and the hope that the marriage will produce many children. Although the younger Malays are becoming more modern in their thinking, many customs and traditions of the wedding are still being practiced today. Therefore, they continue to form a vital part of the rich Malay culture. Among the four major races, the Malays have the least number of restrictions that the mother has to follow after the birth of the baby. For the Malays, confinement lasts 44 days. Some Malay mothers who have just given birth take a special drink called jamu. It is believed that the pores in the body are open during labor and jamu has properties that can keep the body warm. If the body is not kept warm, the Malays believe that they will suffer from cramps and rheumatism when they are older. This also means mothers are not supposed to drink cold water. Fruits such as guava, green bananas and pineapples are also to be avoided because of their cooling effect. During this confinement period, a female masseuse is engaged to help the mother regain her figure or at least to trim down her extended tummy. Malay Muslims love to celebrate when a new baby is born to the family. The father customarily whispers the prayer call or azan into the newborn's right ear and the ikamat into his left ear. This signifies that the first thing the baby hears is the call to God, thus pointing the way for him to the chosen path. A week after his birth, the infant's hair will be shaved and the family performs the akika by sacrificing a sheep to give thanks to God for blessing them with a child. Muslims believe that this sacrifice shows gratitude to God. The meat is later cooked and distributed to family members, friends, neighbors, and the less fortunate. Male circumcision is a tradition that dates back to the days of Prophet Ibrahim. All Malay Muslim males have to follow this tradition, and it is done for hygiene purposes too. Circumcision is carried out a week after the baby boy is born or before the boy reaches puberty. Puberty marks the transition from a boy to a man or a girl to a woman. To the Malay Muslim community, life and death is determined by God. The Malay Muslim funeral is a solemn affair. The deceased is bathed by family members, dried and wrapped in three to five pieces of unsewn cloth from top to toe. This white cloth is called the kain kapan. Sweet-smelling atta oil and powdered sandalwood would be sprinkled on the body. Malay Muslims bury their dead as quickly as possible. This is done to respect the dead and to avoid decomposition. Malay Muslims do not use coffins to bury their dead. The body is laid to rest on its right, with the cheek touching the earth, while at the same time facing the direction of Mecca. The Singapore Malays, a vibrant heartbeat lending its rich heritage to the vast tapestry of Singapore's interracial experiences.